What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. Once again, another Still Worth It video, and this time around, I'm actually sick, so I'm gonna be like coughing up a lot. My nose is basically congested, so please excuse my voice sometimes, but we're gonna be talking about one of the phones that probably 0.01% of the world is using, and if you're currently using this phone, then you're a veteran of phones, and that phone is the iPhone 4S. This thing is a trooper, and you know what, honestly, there's been some pretty weird revelations that happened last year after my SWI video I did last year, so we're going to be hitting on that too. It's pretty weird that that happened, but the iPhone 4S came out in 2011, so this year it will be turning 9 years old in October. That's pretty crazy, dude. This phone, it doesn't even feel like this phone is that old because in a lot of ways, the build quality wise, it's definitely held up quite a bit. You know, this thing doesn't feel like a cheap phone. It still feels, I mean, there's phones coming out now that don't even feel as premium as this thing, which is pretty crazy to say. Apple really knocked it out of the park with this phone. But looking at the front, you can see we have a 3.5 inch IPS panel. This one is 640 by 960 pixels. And it's funny because the PPI, which is the pixels per inch, that screen density is almost the same thing as the iPhone 11 that we have now. I think the iPhone 11 has like 326 or something like that which actually this one actually has more pixels per inch than that one possibly or maybe they're about the same or whatever but that's pretty crazy obviously the iphone 11's display and screen is way better than the 4s but that's still pretty crazy that that's the case you know we haven't really seen any improvements since then but the screen on this thing isn't bad at all i mean i you know this one had the retina display that the 4 kind of brought and i think this phone still you know it, it the screen of it isn't a horrible thing obviously if you kind of zoom out of the screen and you look at everything around it that's probably the thing that ages it the most we really don't have screens that are 3.5 inches anymore a lot of them even like a five inch screen is considered like small nowadays but think about it this time this was the only phone apple sold they only sold one iphone 4s like the, there's only one model now they have multiple models <laughs> of the same year lineup which is pretty insane and obviously we have that home button on the bottom that if you, if you held it down it brought in siri which is cool all that bezel around that display all that beautiful looking bezel and it's weird though because even just a couple years after that like i just talked about the google pixel just before this one and that one literally had the same amount of bezel on it as this one that one had a 69 percent screen to body ratio this one is 54 percent because obviously there's a smaller screen on this but now we do have that older 30 pin connector on this phone. This was the last iPhone to have that old charging port on that iPhone. Eventually the iPhone 5 brought in the lightning port, which is awesome that we still use that. We have a headphone jack on this phone as well. Volume buttons on the side, power button up top. And I really wish they went back to having the volume button up top. I think it's really weird that they have it on the side still because whenever I go to turn the volume on or off or I try to turn my phone off with, with the power button I always end up taking a screenshot on my phone which is so obnoxious but when it was up top we never had that issue on the back a single camera setup glass back and like I stated dude this phone still feels like a very very premium phone dude like I've owned so many phones and this one still is up there which I'm really really happy about so in terms of the outside that pretty much covers it now hitting on the software this thing was a trooper at the end of the day and it didn't deserve to go down the way it did but it did bring a really cool thing last year. So this thing started off with iOS 5. At the end of it, it got iOS 9. So we were able to go to iOS 9.3.5, which really wasn't the best thing ever. It was kind of more basic and, you know, it really shouldn't have gotten it to begin with. But Apple decided to push it. And that's probably one of only like one time that Apple should have never pushed the latest and greatest software on this thing. I feel like they could have probably just skipped it and went on with their life. But iOS 9.3.5 kind of, you know, made this phone very choppy. It didn't make it horrible. Like it wasn't like a complete completely unusable experience but it just made everything choppy and unsmooth but the weird thing is the last year Apple actually pushed an update for the iPhone 4s which you know it took a year it took like a three year gap for them to push an update for this thing but it was iOS 9.3.6 I believe and that was literally just a security update it was not an update to where it was like adding any more features or anything it was strictly just a security update and for them to do that is actually super impressive the fact that you know some people are still using this phone and there was a huge issue with it they decided to go have the team go back edit the code all that stuff code the new security update and push it for that phone is so insane i still can't believe they did that but that's just a testament to apple software systems so even though there's really nobody using an iphone 4s they still push that update which was insane and maybe we'll see another update today too or maybe this year who knows i don't know like it's a possibility but that's definitely a crazy thing in my opinion man yeah it's definitely not getting software updates anymore it's pretty much done unless apple pushes ios 9.3.7 which i don't think they're going to but who knows you know maybe it could happen 
So in terms of software, that's pretty much it. There may be a jailbreak out for it on iOS 9. I haven't really been following jailbreaks up since the Check Rain one came out, and I didn't even own an iPhone until like iOS 9 something on an iPhone 6 Plus. So I never owned a 4S as a main phone. So maybe there's a jailbreak out for it. I'm not really too sure. Now hating on the performance side of things. Okay, this thing has the Apple A5 chip inside of it. It has a dual core CPU, and there were 50 different models of the iPhone 4S. There was the 8, 16, 32, and 64 gigabyte variant models of the iPhone 4S, and all those models had half a gigabyte of RAM. It had 512 megabytes of RAM, <laughs> and it's so crazy to say that in 2020, like we have phones with like 12 gigabytes of RAM and like 15, and like this thing has 512 megabytes. It's crazy. And what I can tell you about the performances is that it is the best performing device I've ever owned in my life. No, I'm totally joking. I mean, obviously it's not that good. Like I don't, I don't think anybody's using this phone now and really like expecting it to be good or good or great. The worst thing about this phone is that a ton of apps aren't even able to be downloaded on this thing. So you can't even go and download apps on this thing. And if you can get them, they're not the latest and greatest versions of those apps. You can only go up to a certain amount of the apps that are still compatible with your device. So you have to download older versions of those apps. So you're kind of missing out on features. You're missing out on a ton of things. Sometimes like for example, Snapchat, it won't let you even log into those apps unless you're on a certain version, but you can't get on that version because those versions are for the latest devices, or at least I think on iOS 10 and newer or iOS 11 and newer. iOS 9.3.6 is kind of pushing it and a lot of apps are not even able to allow you to install the log into those apps unless you're on the at least one of the newer versions. So that's kind of stupid, but games and stuff will work fine. Temple Run, I think is really one of the only games I have running on my iPhone 4S. I think I have like Real Racing 3 and maybe some other ones too. In terms of performance across the board, it's what you expect. For a 2011 phone, I guess it's not bad, you know, when you consider it's in 2020, a whole almost nine years later. I think it's pretty impressive. The fact that this phone still even turns on is pretty impressive in my opinion, but I think performance is more or less of what you expect. It's probably like nothing close to anything which you can find in like a $100 budget phone at Best Buy or Walmart or something, but I guess it gets the job done if you're all you're trying to do is pick up calls, iMessage people back, FaceTime this thing has FaceTime. If you want to go on Safari, you have that capability. But other other than that, you're pretty much lucked out on a lot of basic capability that a lot of budget phones have nowadays. So in terms of performance, that's pretty much where I'll leave it at. Moving on to the camera, this thing has a single 8 megapixel camera on the back and on the front it has a VGA camera. I guess it's not even considered and it doesn't have a megapixel count, it's just a VGA. And I think the back camera is really, you might be shocked to hear this, it's not bad for a 9 year old device. I was expecting it to be a lot worse than it was. Obviously it's not amazing like if I compared it I mean I'd rather have the front facing camera of like an iPhone 7 than this thing probably but you know it gets the job done I think like it's not a bad camera setup I think they really just I mean really like I've stated on other older phones that the only thing keeping it down is the hardware features like there's no ultra wide or telephoto lens but this one kind of takes that to another level because the quality of the photos aren't you know perfect they're not great even but they're good enough and when you consider the age and the price point of this phone I think it's pretty decent which is pretty crazy to say that an iPhone 4S's camera is still pretty decent in 2020, but it's all things considered, you know what I mean? So if, if Apple decided to put this camera on, you know, this year's camera or the iPhone 12's camera, then yeah, I would freaking cry, but it's not that big of a deal, I don't think so. That pretty much covers it up in terms of the camera. Now, ending it off with the battery life, this thing has a 1,432 mAh battery, which actually isn't that bad of a size battery for a phone like this. This thing is grossly underpowered. This thing has a pretty small screen. It doesn't have crazy background processes running on it. And believe it or not, dude, the standby time of this phone is pretty impressive. You can get multiple, multiple days of standby time on this thing. If my 11 Pro, like this thing will die probably within like three days, probably, if I don't charge it. My iPhone 4S could probably last for like five weeks before it goes and dies. I mean, it's not even that big of a size battery, but that's just how underpowered the iPhone 4S is. So pretty average when you're using it, but the standby time is actually pretty impressive. And to kind of sum up this whole entire video, guys, is the iPhone 4S still worth it in 2020? I mean, if you're still using this phone in 2020, I want to hear your experience with it, okay? I want to hear how it's impacted your life, how it's impacted your relationships with people, calling them back, texting them. I want to see if you even go on Snapchat or anything like that. Like, I want to hear your experience with it. 
because if you've been able to make it this far, then that's, you know, worthy of writing a comment. You should write a book about that experience too, to be honest. But I don't think the iPhone 4S is worth it to about every single person watching this video. And if you made it this far into the video, I would, I would 100% I recommend you picking up an iPhone 4S. The lowest I would go in the iPhone totem pole of phones, that kind of rhymed, is the iPhone 6S or the iPhone SE. Those are the two phones that the very bottom of the bottom I would go to. I would not even pick up an iPhone 6 or 6 Plus anymore. The iPhone 6S or the iPhone SEs are both phones I would highly recommend. So I'll find the cheapest ones on Amazon and I'll link them down in the description below. If you guys want to get them from there, you can help support the channel at the same time. But that is pretty much it, man. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber that we get really does count. So it means so much if you guys could hit that. Also check out the other links down in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my second channel, all those things are linked down below. I'd really appreciate if you guys would check it out. But more importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out to them.